Google dropped the Gemini 2.5 Flash, their newest and first hybrid model. They claim it's super fast and lightweight and extremely smart without costing a fortune. Lately, I have seen a wave of a powerful model that came out. But here what makes this one stand out. You can actually use it for free as a coding assistant, thank you to Google API. Of course, there is a limit, but here is the real question. Can this model actually help us to code better or just another flashy model? In the next few minutes, I'm gonna put the Gemini 2 point flash to the test on some real coding task in Visual Studio Code with Raw Code Assistant. So stick around and let's see if this model worth adding to your workflow or skipping it entirely. Gemini 2 point flash model is actually the fairest fully hybrid model that we get from Google. With hybrid, I mean you can control if it can use reasoning or thinking mode or not using it and act like the normal models like, like the DeepSeek version 3.1, the non-thinking model actually is very, very low at cost. It's incredibly cheap. I think it's one of the cheapest. It's extremely cheap for a very capable model. Let's look up the pricing of this model. First of all, the no thinking pricing. We have here 15 cent for 1 million token input pricing, 60 cents for the 1 million output pricing. And for the thinking capability, you have to pay $3 and a half. I think this is for the output not the input because the output is more expensive in the reasoning mode. And compared to the other model, as I can see here, it's the O4 Mini, which is a very brand new model, and the Cloud Throne at 3.7, which this is this model started to feel slightly not that unique after I have seen what the Gemini 2.5 Pro model can do in terms of coding. Also, we have the upcoming ROG 3 Beta which is extremely very good at coding sometimes, I don't know how. And of course, the DeepSeek R1, which is the only open source model here. If you look at the coding benchmark over here in Live Bench and the Live Code Bench, which have scored 63% and have not that bad, but compared to the Beta Grok, to the Beta Grok 3, it's slightly lacking behind, which is very weird to see the Grok 3 is good at anything. Also, the ADAR is kind of not that great, but I don't care about benchmark anymore, but I just want to look at it to see what they displayed in terms of the capability. For the Web Dev Arena leaderboard, as you can see here, the Cloud 3.7 Sonnet model is still in the top. It didn't change. And after that, the GBT401, which I accidentally test this model under the name Optimus Alpha, which was the last video that I made on the channel. It's a very good model, especially how it generates the back-end code, but the front-end, I feel it feel lacking too much, especially when I used it. And after that is the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. This model is incredibly good. I didn't make a video about it. I have to be honest, I was very busy by the time it released, but this special model is amazing. I feel like Google is catching up in every direction. And finally, the live bench which is my favorite benchmark to look at. Currently, the O model are on the top ranking. They're basically the top six or top five, if you didn't count the duplication of the names. But after that, immediately we have the Gemini 2 point flash preview model, and it's already beating the pro version encoding, which I don't see it like completely beating it because it's almost the same number, but the fraction is what make it slightly ahead. Then you can look down below and see that the Sonnet have came a long way from the top to become behind the DeepSeek R1 models. Let's stop talking about this benchmark and jump ahead into coding. Inside Visual Studio Code, using the raw code, I created a new profile for this model. You can create new profile by using this button and copy anything from the configuration profile that you have. My new profile called the G2.5 Flash short for the Gemini model. Bought my API key, selected the 2.5 flash preview, not the thinking one. I don't think that I need the thinking one for coding. I feel like the faster, the faster model or the normal LLM is better. I don't need it to sync for me. I just needed to print out the code that I need. So I selected this one, hit save and done. 
and in the code mode down below I selected this model so I can use it I'm gonna start with the front end I'm gonna give it an image and until it create a new component based on the current Fortar design that you see and this is the image that it should result something similar to it or near to it and I'm gonna click on the camera image and go to the images that I have inside this folder select the footer this is my current prompt it's an enhanced prompt and the enhanced prompt is a very easy way in raw code to improve the quality of the code that you will get and this stuff I talk about it in my upcoming ebook which honestly I have mad respect for anyone who attempted to write a book because this stuff take a lot of time this book is in the design process right now it's about how to code with AI it's targeting the beginner like have zero knowledge to the medium level developer so I'm gonna hit send message and see how it will respond for my first attempt it's very easy I feel like it's very very fast to do it but it did one mistake here in the comments it created props and explained each one of them what kind of type and description of this props that it need for this component and how I can use it and also this the dependency that it's used which I kind of surprised how good this model in generating this kind of stuff then as you can see here there's some sort of documentation talking about the props and the type of it and explanation on the top of this model this is really clean and and this is the UI that it resulted it's extremely similar to the image the only thing is wrong is the input over here it should be white I think and this is the original image that I did give to the Gemini 2.5 flash as you can see here is the similarity is really close like the design is very similar the only thing that is missing the current input color but this is easily fixed and before we continue using this model you can Actually, you can see in Roku it's counting money, but I don't have any payment process inside this account for Google. And actually, I'm using it for free and I can prove it by taking a look to this current rate limits from Google. This is basically the Google AI developer documentation. This is the model that I'm using and this is the free tier. If you didn't break the 10 request per minute, which is the RBM, you can use it for free. And also, you have and by day you have 500 requests so uh, you can easily quickly burn the 500 requests per day especially if you're using something like line or row code but this model is actually very good at generating code very quickly in large context prompts basically you can give it a large task and wait for the code to be output in the first response we can see here also, the Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental is 5 requests per minute and also the same amount of tokens, but you only limit it by 25 requests per day. This is extremely low, like really, really low. I can burn this number in like half an hour, heavily coding very quickly. But the good thing about this model is that it have a long context length, it means like it can generate much, much larger code bases and take a lot of information at one request and you have here tier one which is extremely generous you have 10,000 requests per day and 1,000 requests per minute and I don't know how you can break this number this is actually a very good free tier by Google remember you're not paying anything you just have to stick to the rate limits per day now let's test it in more general stuff that I will be using inside this project a theme color of this project I'm using I'm gonna be using the main color is burgundy which is kind of wine dark color with gold and white this is like the combination of the website that I'm creating right now this is the enhance prompt by the way the enhance I'm using is the using the model DeepSeq version 3.1 you can use a lot of model together to create an extremely cost effective setups for example if you combine this model the DeepSeq version 3.1 with the Gemini 2.5 flash and the Bro, you can have a very cost effective very good cost effective near zero dollar setup but it's not for heavily used daily day to day it's more of the I can use it in my side project or learning or creating videos if you're creating videos 
By the way, I also put the rate limit on this model for 22 seconds and this number will make sure that I don't break the 10 requests per minute fast. Maybe I can lower it down to 10 seconds, which might be better. Here, I will put it to 10 seconds, save and done to make it faster. Okay, this task, it took me more than it expected, not because the model is bad, actually because the Tailwind versions or is not yet somehow inside this model, probably because the cut uh, cut of data is by the beginning of the year. And this new Tailwind version is came out the end of March. So it's basically a few weeks ago. And after I fixed it myself, which don't underestimate the power of the human editing yet, I can fix it easily. So I can see the burgundy here in the dark seam if I switch. After I fixed it, I noticed there is an issue with draw code right now. It's not completely compatible with the Gemini 2 Flash, with the Gemini 2 Point Flash model. So I, I think if you want to use this model with raw code, you have to wait a little bit until they fix the integration issue right now i want to work with the back end and connect it to the redux state management that i have so this is my next step i'm gonna target certain routes for example portal or the admin routes and i would tell it to create slices inside redux handling the logic for it so my prompt is create new redux slices for the router inside the server router admins and put it in a new redux admin slice folder and i will hit run i noticed something very good i didn't ask it to put the slices inside the store of redux and it went ahead and it imported it and bought it was the reducer and the middleware and it didn't destroy the current logic that i have inside it or remove the current slices inside it so that's a very good win for it and even with this task it's extremely long and and i in my Book, I can advise against the creating the such tasks in one go. Basically, give it a bunch of files inside one folder. I did give it the entire files inside this folder, the entire routes inside the admins, and also the slices inside the admin slices in Redux. And I told it, look at these routes inside this folder, and each one of them, they're a corresponding slice for it. Look at the endpoints and fix the slice according to the endpoint inside the router endpoints. And with Cloud Sonnet, you can have some sort of issue sometimes, this kind of task, especially if the routes are have a lot of endpoints and there is a lot of information. But something like this for the Gemini Flash, especially with the context links of 1 million token, is not an issue at all. So it went ahead. Open every single slice and created the correct endpoint for it. This is fantastic so far. One more task before we end this video. I'm going to create something for the back end really quickly. It's going to be a middleware for one for admin authentication and one for the client authentication. And I will tell it to look to my Prism schema over here, which one of the things that I kind of guide people through in multiple videos that I made that you can give it the database schema and tell it to create a logic around it. And this is my current simple prompt. Look at my Prisma schema, which is this one. And I want to create a solid OS middleware, one for admin and one for user. I'll be using the token that is sent inside the controller of OS controller, which is this one. I give it the logic for it so it can understand that it is GWT generated with the information inside it. I will not tell it where is the middleware, so it can figure this out. You can enhance this prompt or can't enhance it, but I will enhance it. And the enhance prompt is took what I want and build on top of it by adding the steps needed to be inside the logic, like validating the GWT token in the common request, verifying the rule, strict rule-based access control, handle token explanation, explanation and error response. And of course, it need to be production ready. So this is sound very good enhancer prompt. Remember I'm using for enhancing is the DeepSeq version 3.1 and you can find it for free also on open router. And I will hit enter and I will wait for the logic. And the logic that I got is one function for authenticated user and one function for the admins. That will basically look for the headers authorization. It will take the token, split it at barrier, and it will work on the verification of the token itself with the GWT secret. 
so far so good this model is really solid i just want to talk about how insane is the jump for the google models lately every single model they produce is better than the last one with a jump like it's not slight improvement no this is actual good solid improvement in their models and i used to make fun of their models lately they are amazing i used to use ChatGPT daily for fixing stuff and improving the grammar sending emails all this kind of stuff daily right now i'm barely using ChatGPT. all i'm using right now is the ai studio from google even the ai studio from google which is created only for developer by what i have seen so far no lot not a lot of people know about it and even the people that know about it is kind of confused why they're giving all the stuff for free it's solid look at this new ui it's extremely clean and cool to use i don't feel like i do need to use chat anymore which is kind of weird like if you told me one year ago that google right now will be at this position it's almost on the same level of open ai model which was leagues above it i will be telling you are crazy but there is a reason for that and i talked about it in a previous video you can check it out in my channel is about why what is the google end goal or the end game as i said this so far google is on a good track lately and uh, i feel like the wheel is shifting toward the google more than open ai and anthropic ai finally i have been waiting for the r2 model it should drop anytime soon for my upcoming video i will be talking about the new update from augment code it's also a free amazing coding assistant to have yeah rate limits and i kind of made a video that did result the company bought rate limits on their code because the video would for some reason talk off compared to the channel size but i will be talking about the new update and uh, what the new stuff that they added and how this company is basically building a new high quality coding assistant inside visual studio code so thank you guys for watching and thank you for the 7000 subscriber and thank you for watching and see you on the coming video